Hey guys, today's episode of Low Elo League of Legends is going to be focusing on a Silver 2 player playing Lux into Yasuo. And in particular, we'll be looking at the level 1 invade, how to play the laning phase against a Yasuo and being constantly pushed in, and how to make sure as a Lux and as a mid laner in general, you're grouping and getting in enough team fights to ultimately win the game. Let's get into the recording. Cool. Right, so let's watch this invade and let's see why it goes wrong. Cool. So generally, if, if you want to invade at level 1, uh, you want to have a numbers advantage or at least you want to have all 5 of you there. So if you are going to go for a one uh, a level 1 invade like they're going for now, you would ideally want your Nasus and Maokai here. So this is the first warning sign to me that this invade is going to end badly if they decide to go for this. And let's see what happens. Notice Maokai and Nasus. Nasus and Maokai are not here, but they go for the invade anyway. Now it's it's a 4v3, so it's not too bad, but what it what ends up happening is they get caught because they have to push into the vision, and all the enemy has to do is wait there with a numbers advantage. And now let's see what happened. Lux has already burnt her flash exhaust, so that's going to affect her for the next five minutes of the game. And as you can see. This level 1 invade that should never have happened in the first place because they've got a numbers discrepancy has now basically set Lux up for failure in laning phase. So we're now going to have to look at this game and figure out how this Lux can basically chill out and help to, you know, uh, get back into this game with, you know, only one health pot at 60% health. She's now used both health pots and no sums. The good thing is Yasuo has no sums, but he is up a health pot, but obviously a Yasuo thrives in this kind of condition where Lux kind of needs to scale and is purely a skill shot based champion, whereas Yasuo is um, very mobile and so therefore kind of naturally counters Lux, particularly in the early game because he doesn't use mana. So when I think of Lux, I think of good wave management in the mid game, I think of really good skill shots if you can hit them. And I think of a really good team fighter that can help assist the team in terms of damage, CC, and shielding. Now, when I think of Yasuo, I think of Lame Kingdom. I think highly mobile. I think very good with a couple of kills. And I think when he gets that first item power spike, he's very strong. So I'm going to watch this play out. And already you can see this Lux is kind of letting this Yasuo do way too much to her. So what you want to do in a situation like this where you're behind in the early game is as the Lux, you basically want to be letting Yasuo push you in because you can't help that. You can't actually contest the wave when you're on 30% HP and 50% mana. But what you want to prevent is exactly what just happened there is letting him poke you as well. So you, can, you should only be letting him do one thing to you, not two things. If he gets two advantages off to you, that means you're doing something wrong. So in this situation specifically, what this Lux should be doing is, yes, letting Yasuo push her in. Because as you can see, there's only a 2 CS difference here. So Yasuo isn't actually that good at CSing. Although it feels like there's a lot of pressure on this Lux, she's actually CSing decently well relatively to the Yasuo. But the problem that she's failing at is she's letting Yasuo poke her too much. Now the good thing is, Yasuo is just going to make mistakes in this lane. Because in Silver, when the enemy mid laner is constantly pushed they're going to make mistakes and you're going to watch this play out where this Yasuo just keeps making mistakes and will eventually get punished for it. So when you're in a situation like this as Lux, you, all you need to do is really sit back, chill out, focus on CS and wait for the Yasuo to make a mistake and then capitalize on it. Don't let him poke you, let him push the wave in and just wait for that mistake because it always happens, particularly with Yasuo players. Cool, so this is much better by the uh, the Lux. Obviously, she's down 5 CS, but she will catch a bit of it up now. But this is naturally what is going to happen in a wave state like this, where, you know, the level 1 invade goes really wrong, and you have to use both your health pots. So, ideally, we want to auto-attack that minion. So, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done for this Lux on her CSing under turret. Ideally, you just want to auto-attack a caster minion, and then let the turret attack it, then auto-attack again. Hopefully we're going to see a gank set up here. So let's see how this Lux reacts to the Nocturne coming. No ping by Nocturne, which I would have preferred. Really good bait by Lux. Great snare here. This is looking good. Good, good kite back. Good, good exhaust. Excellent. Excellent. Well played by the Lux. Uh, yep, Nocturne should now help push this in. 
Nocturne should help push this in because Lux does not have the mana or health to safely push this in. So Nocturne is doing the right thing here by helping Lux push so she can get a faster recall and therefore not allow Yasuo to get back in the lane and re-push this lane out before she's reset. Really good. Reset. You can just recall there. That's fine. Anywhere is good there. Excellent. And now we're only down to CS and we're actually ahead in gold by about 50 gold. Even though it feels like this Lux has been losing this lane, you can see just by playing safe, letting Yasuo do what he wants on the lane and just focusing on CS, you can capitalize on deficits and capitalize on the enemy's mistakes. Good, this is a good trade. A little bit of bad positioning there. Uh, definitely needs to work on a micro, particularly trying to stay out of range of Yasuo. You can kind of see what Yasuo's pattern is. He um, goes in, dashes out, dashes back in, and Lux is kind of getting baited every time, as you can see. There's almost a tether attached to these two, um, and Yasuo keeps yanking on the tether, and Lux just keeps coming a little bit too close. But it looks like Nocturne's coming over for a gank again, so let's see what happens here. Again, really good binding. Notice the pattern of this gank. Lux has gotten a binding both times to set it up. Yasuo takes a turret shot and will hopefully die to this. Oh no, oh no. Okay, and then Lux dies to creeps. Not good at all. Um, I think what Lux should have done there is just let... So, so here, I think Lux should have just let Nocturne try and kill him and instead focused on the wave here because look how much CS this is. This is almost like half a kill or something. Yeah, this CS is almost half a kill and what ends up happening is she'll end up dying here and she'll lose all this CS and then Yasuo and Mordekaiser will get to push this out. So look what happens now. All of a sudden we're behind about 600 gold and we're getting even further behind with all these minions crashing into our wave so we're losing XP and CS. Purely preventable simply by just not over committing to the gank. Nocturne should have been able to get that kill on his own. Lux did as much as she could there to do any more, which she tried to do, which I get. You're trying to help your teammate, but in hindsight and in reality, you know, you can only do so much um, with ganks. Lux set it up perfectly, and it was up to Nocturne there in that situation to really finish off the job. So a bit of a shame there. Let's watch how we can climb this back. We're now 700 gold behind. Try and cancel that recall if we can. No, push, 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 push. Push in. Don't worry too much about warding after your Yasuo just recalls your enemy because it's very unlikely a jungler is going to try and 1v1 gank you. Um, he might, but the chances are he's already just ganked you. He probably won't. I'd much rather you push this in a bit quicker. Now, what we could do here is potentially look for a roam or we could just push this next wave again. And what I like to do as Lux actually is sometimes use your R to push in the waves even faster. We can see here she's going to get dodge, dodge, dodge. No dodging at all. Notice how Lux just walks straight backwards. When you're versing a Yasuo, you really want to kind of zigzag. Almost like you're getting chased by an alligator or a hippopotamus or something that suffers a bit, um, you know, when you run into zigzag. Isn't as agile as a human. Same thing in League of Legends. Cool. Now Nocturne's ca camping the Lux. Good play. Nice work. Excellent. Cool. Now, what this Lux should do with this Nocturne is, right now we have mid-priority, and you can look top. We don't have top priority, but we do have bot lane priority. So, what does that mean in terms of objectives? Well, that should mean that now that Lux has mid-priority, and that we have bot priority to a certain extent, Lux and Nocturne should be angling to get this Dragon. So, Lux should push this wave out and then walk over to Dragon to help Nocturne out. So, let's see if that happens. Excellent. Great macro from the Lux. This is really good to see. She wards to protect Nocturne. You can even um, use that scrying plant. Okay, we can see some awkwardness happening here. Nice. Um, good job. And now we want to recall. So Lux just recall, recall, recall. You're going to lose too much here. Okay, she's going to go for this. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what happens here because you're going to lose a lot in the mid lane. So let's see how this plays out. I think this is a very low percentage chance. Yeah, there we go. Low percentage chance of that working out. And now all that's going to happen is this gold lead is going to continue. Not to extend, but, you know, get back out into that 600, 700 gold lead. And now Lux all of a sudden has to walk back to lane with 70% health, 40% mana. 
and she didn't get a reset after the dragon. So ideally what you want to do there, even though there was an opportunity to gank bot, you're much better as the Lux in terms of getting more XP, CS, and gold for yourself. You're much better just doing the safe bet where you just recall just before dragon dies, so around at the 1000 HP mark, so you can get back to lane quicker and avoid what Yasuo basically just did to her. Cool, Yasuo's missed. We could probably get a plating here. We've got to really watch out though because we don't know where Mordekaiser is. So I would just back now, back off, back off. Good. I'd probably recall. Um, it's a cannon wave, so it'd be a really good recall. We see Mordekaiser. Just recall. You've got 1.3k. Good. She recalls a bit slow. Notice how you should be really recalling about 5 seconds quicker there. Because then that means you get back 5 seconds quicker to lane, which means you lose, you know, or have the potential to lose less CS and less XP. We're going to probably notice that Mordekaiser is going to gank bot lane here as we just saw him kind of hovering bot side. So they're going to have to really watch out here. If you're Lux and you're quite vigilant and you know where you place your wards and you're very good with your minimap, for me, I would have just been pinging danger here because we saw Mordekaiser bot side. There's nothing on top side because Nasus isn't there and Lux is gone. So the only logical place for Mordekaiser to be right now is to be ganking bot lane or taking Rift Herald. And so... In reality, given that we saw Mordekaiser here and we didn't see him topside, you can just assume that Mordekaiser is coming bot. And what you do as the vigilant mid laner is ping your bot lane to be like, danger, danger, danger. You don't have to chat to them. All you have to do is give them the pings and particularly ping the Mordekaiser while he's in vision so that they can see, oh shit, Mordekaiser is bot lane. And then you ping danger, danger, danger that he could potentially gank you. And that death would have been purely avoidable. I like what Lux is doing here where I recommended, you know, use your ult to push the waves and it then minimizes downtime. What I'd love from Nocturne is to take this Rift Herald. Good. That's really good to see. Um, we love this. Lux has prior, which is perfect. Nice. Good E. She could have burst that to get the proc off, but that's okay. Good. Um, don't help the Nocturne too much here. Okay, you got to go back to lane or look top. Okay, Nasa should be able to get that. Good. Okay, go help. Go go back to your lane. Go back to your lane. Lux, Lux, Lux. You're going to miss CS. Nocturne doesn't need Lux here to do this. All that Lux is doing now is losing a whole wave of CS. And this lead isn't going to extend, but it's going to basically stay stagnant, which isn't good given how much uh, focus Nocturne's given on mid lane. Now, the good thing about this Lux is, even though she hasn't really gotten any kills out of Nocturne's ganks, what she has gained is a lot of macro advantages. So this Nocturne has actually played this very smart. He's used his focus on the mid lane to secure the first Dragon and the first Rift Herald for his team, which are really important macro objectives in the first 15 minutes of the game. So great job by the Nocturne to use mid lane to his advantage to get macro advantages. And now you can see that the Lux is playing really quite well with the Nocturne now. And you can see they're going to get rewarded here with a lot of platings. Um, which is really good. We can see Yasuo topside, which I'm not too sure why he is. Um, we can actually catch the Yasuo here. Okay, we see Mordekaiser, so it's a bit dangerous. Neither of them seem to see the Yasuo, which is a bit worrying. That flash is really dangerous. Again, try and dodge. Yeah. No dodging. Really poor uh, map awareness there. And, you know, understanding that we saw Mordekaiser and Yasuo walk all the way here. Just a bit too greedy. What you should do here is just let the Rift Herald um, crash and then don't try and force this last plating. It's it, You end up dying here just to try and force the last plating. It's just not worth the risk reward there. It really isn't worth it. And now all of a sudden this Yasuo is 1.2k gold ahead. Purely from Lux and Nocturne's mistakes. Mordekaiser hasn't even really focused this lane and hasn't actually had that much influence on this lane compared to the Nocturne. So it's a bit of a shame here um, that these mistakes are, you know, appearing in this mid lane. Good. So next dragon is spawning in 16 seconds. So I'm going to want to see this Lux push this out and then rotate to try and help. Okay, that's fine. Use his wind wall. Let's use his... Yep, good. Good. Good, 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 good. good. We can be a bit more aggressive here, but that's okay. Awesome. I now want to see Lux move over safely. Yes, this is the safe way to do it. Okay, let's see what happens here. Good fight. 
by red team it looks like as long as Maokai survives excellent Lux is now rotating and Yasuo can't because she pushed him out of lane which is really good um, what I'd do there if I'm the Lux is yeah just use my W a bit earlier so I get the assists but this is really good. What I want to see here for Lux is to give Nocturne a bit of help and then just go back to mid and push this wave out so that it crashes. And this is something that this Lux needs to focus on because her CS is quite low, as you can see. Um, this is fine. Ideally, Ash should have helped. Like, I don't know why Ash is recalling on full, full HP here. Um, that's really bad by Ash, to be honest. She should never have recalled there on full HP. Oh, unlucky by the Lux. Good job. Good job by the Yasuo, to be honest. But really, that was Ash's fault. So I guess in hindsight, what you could do if you're the Lux Nocturne there is is make a mutual decision not to go for that Dragon because Lux recalled. Um, but really, you know, that's, that's Lux's bad there. But definitely preventable by the Lux and the Nocturne if they just simply called off the Dragon. But a bit of a shame. Let's see Yasuo's gold lead now. He's at about 2k gold purely from preventable mistakes that both the Lux and Nocturne have made together in unison. Um, so let's see what happens here. Good. Good, good, good. Let's go help the Nocturne. Good. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, no. Oh no, that is not good. Lux could have played that a little bit better with our spells and abilities, but not the end of the world. This Yasuo now is very far ahead, about 3k gold ahead. So what you want to do as the Lux right now is really just stop the bleeding as much as you can. So you go back to fundamentals and basics of how can I slow the tempo down of this game and how can I just focus on my CS and trying to get back into this game and reduce the kills that this Yasuo can get. So good wave management, safe positioning and not taking any more risks. This Lux and Nocturne have taken quite a few risks and they have never really paid off. When they've played good macro fundamental League of Legends, it's worked quite well. But when they've done risky plays where they either overextend or try and take objectives when they don't have priority or assistance from their teammates, it's always ended quite badly. So if you're the Lux in this situation, what you'd probably want to do is just rotate to top lane and defend that. You can tell this Lux is a little bit confused as to what she wants to do. But you should basically go top lane because it's um, going to be crashing and you don't want to miss this CS. Mid lane is very safe here at the moment, so we're not going to lose much XP or resources here. But instead of recalling here, Lux should have just walked and tried to defend this lane. Instead, she recalls. They're probably going to get tier 2 here for free and they're going to lose a lot of CS, which is quite bad by Lux. But something I would see in a lot of, I guess probably gold and below games of mid laners where they kind of think their lane is mid lane for the whole game or for you know a certain time period when in reality you can basically leave lane whenever you want particularly if there's a macro reason to do it and in this case it was to defend the tier 2 defend against the Yasuo and Teemo push and to get some extra CS cool I'm just gonna turn that game volume down a bit seems a bit loud um, excellent. Cool. Right, so Rift Herald's up. I don't think they can contest. What you want to do is Lux, once you're level 9, is obviously swap, switch to the blue trinket, which she hasn't done. Um, she's also only placed, uh, you know, a couple of wards this game, which isn't too good, but not the end of the world. Cool. So Lux, you just want to push this out as the Lux and again try and chill this game out a bit. Um, Lux really needs to catch up in items. You can see Yasuo is already at two items and Lux is still very far behind and is behind about 2k gold. So she has clawed that back from about the 3k gold deficit that we saw, but she was actually up 50 gold in this matchup at one point. So it's a bit of a shame that we've gotten to this point, but let's see if they can claw it back. Good poking by Lux. Again, it's kind of an awkward situation when you have a mid laner like Lux. Ideally, Ash should be mid and Lux should be bot, but because of just how this game is going and, you know, classic golden below solo queue, even platinum below solo queue, um, this Lux isn't really going to, you know, allow this Ash, who's 6 and 3, to get in these crucial team fights. So the reason why you want Ash and Lux to switch here, uh, there's two reasons. One, 
because Ash, the 80 carry, should always have the safest lane. It's just traditional that you give your 80 carry the safest lane, which usually happens after one of the bot lane towers are taken. You then rotate your 80 carry to mid because it's traditionally a short lane when both tier one turrets are up. You also want to, particularly in the context of this game, you want to rotate the Lux and Ash because this Lux is 0, 2, and 5, whereas this Ash is 6 and 3. So she has a lot of her team's gold and items on her, but she's stuck in bot lane when we're having really important team fights. So basically what this does is this takes out these 6 kills out of the fight, it takes 8k gold, gold out of the fight, and it just creates really awkward macro moments where... Some of your team want to fight, and it's not a good fight chance, but Ash can't even help to assist. Um, and obviously Lux doesn't help either, and neither does Nasus. So overall, a really bad play by the red team, similar to their invade, where they just had a numbers disadvantage. So purely preventable deaths by Nocturne and Maokai. Again, I understand the idea of what they were trying to do. They wanted to secure Baron, and they wanted to get it, because it's a macro objective. However, in the context of the game and in the context of their teammates, Lux, Nasus, and Ash were in no position to help them. Whether or not that's Ash, Nasus, and Lux's fault of them being in the wrong position, it still doesn't mean that they have to make the mistake of overcommitting on the objective. In hindsight, what they should have done is realized, okay, my Lux, Nasus, and Ash aren't in a position to help. We should therefore just give this, so avoid the two deaths and just let them take Rift. Instead, you let them take Rift and get two kills. So, you know, 600, 700 gold that purely could have been preventable there. And in such a tight game where there is really only a 1k gold difference in, at the 20 minute mark, um, we really don't want to be giving the enemy team any advantages. Now again, we see some macro misplay by Lux. I'm not sure why she's topside when Dragon's up and when this whole bot side, um, her whole team is grouped. Um, what she should have done here is just let this push because there's nothing here. At 20 minutes, one wave of CS is not worth losing Dragon and is not worth not being in your enemy team, your ally team fights. Regardless of, of if your team wins that fight or not, Lux as the mid laner being top lane is never the right play in that situation at 20 minutes when Dragon's up and both teams are grouped around an objective. So hopefully we will see this Lux play a bit more team uh, team orientated and play a bit more um, focusing on objectives and macro like she was doing with the first Dragon and the first Rift. She actually did a really good job of it at the start. Um, but she's kind of fallen off, which I can see is probably a bit of confusion as to what her role is as a Lux mid laner in post laning phase. And this is something a lot of players, gold and below, struggle with is what do what am I meant to be doing? And to be honest, the number one answer is grouping. So if your team is grouped, you want to be there. If there's no grouping on and there's no objectives in the next 60 seconds, you should just be CSing and managing waves. So whether that's top wave, bot wave, mid wave, it's all contextual on where your allies are. But if there's no team fight opportunity or objective on the map, that's what you should be focusing on. But that's the hierarchy. Post 15 minutes, as a mid laner, particularly as Lux, you want to be focusing on, is my team grouped? How can I help them? I need to be there. And then as your secondary is, if my team isn't grouped, if there's no objectives up, I CS. Because CSing is that source of income, XP, and what you need to continue yourself through the mid-late game. But grouping is one of the most important and strongest win conditions in League of Legends. You know, 99 times out of 100, the team that groups more often and the team that groups earlier are often the teams that win the game in solo queue particularly when they have a numbers advantage. And that's why you as a mid laner is so important because you can make the difference between having a numbers advantage or disadvantage just by being at the team fight. Cool, so this is much better by Lux. You notice how she sees that there's a potential fight happening in bot lane, and so she rotates. Now, obviously, the fight opportunity or window is closed. She uses, oh God, that's a little bit dangerous. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Yeah, hopefully she can just survive here. Yeah. No dodging. I don't think this Lux has tried to dodge the Yasuo Q once, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, in hindsight there, Lux should never have altered the wave. She should have saved that ability to try and fight the Yasuo, because as we know, Lux's ult goes through Yasuo's wind wall. So, ideally, once you get some CC, whether it's the Nocturne Fear or the Lux Cure E, uh, you shoot off your ult in the direction of the Yasuo as damage, particularly when you know your Nocturne's there, um, and particularly when you know this Nocturne likes to try and gank this Yasuo. But unfortunately... Not through this Yasuo being a good player or being, you know, um, much better than this Lux. Purely just through Nocturne and Lux's mistakes, um, they have really let this Yasuo get quite fed. And you can see now he is at about a 4k gold lead on this Lux. Cool. Good. So we see a ping for Dragon in 1 minute 30. So again, good. Lux is grouped here with the team. There's not much on here. Nice, she gets the kill. That's really well played by Lux. Um, ideally, what you now want to do until Dragon spawns is just hover in this kind of side of the map, the bottom half of the map. Hopefully, Nocturne gets the kill here. That's really good. That's really important. And yeah, Lux now should just be hovering and chilling and making sure that they can secure this next dragon, as it is two dragons to one. So again, you can hover the Nasus or you hover the bot lane. I think hovering the Nasus here in the context of this situation is better, just because Ash is very safe and Jin just died. So there's not much pressure on the bot lane, and therefore not much reason to hover that. Um, good contest here. Again, we don't want to commit too hard here, really. The goal objective is dragon, but if we can zone or poke, that's always a nice benefit. Good job, good poke. Again, Lux is, excels at that. He's trying to poke and zone the enemy so they can never get in range of the dragon. Um, keep going. Oh. oh, Nocturne, Nocturne. Yeah, that's silly by the Nocturne. Lux, go help. Oh, God, their team isn't helping the poor Nocturne. So Nocturne, yes, is out of position there, but what he should have done, no, you can't start this dragon. Oh, this is so bad. Um, and again, deja vu. It's happened three times this game. Red team have had a numbers disadvantage. At the level one invade, um, when they tried to do second dragon or third dragon, and now at fourth dragon. So you can see here, this is why numbers advantage and understanding what's happening on the minimap in relation to the enemy's positions the ally positions and what objective is up on the map is so important because red is really just losing this game purely because their team isn't grouping at the right time for the right reasons and now they're going to get that third dragon blue team and now all of a sudden they've got a lot of win cons they just got the win con of an open mid lane and they just got the win con of in five minutes the next dragon is going to be Dragon Soul. Obviously, Infernal isn't the strongest Dragon Soul at the moment, but still has about, I would say, an 80 to 90% win rate if you get Dragon Soul. So it, it's really not good. Um, but yeah, let's see what can happen here. And notice this Lux has really only been in eight of her team's 24 kills. And that's why as a mid laner and as a Lux, it's so important to make sure you're grouping and helping your team out and being in the right place at the right time and making sure you're helping your team at the right place at the right time. Um, but now their team is quite disarrayed here. Lux is out of position. She should always just walk the safe way because they've got pure control of that and you've got no vision. So it's always just safer to go around here, even if it means losing the tier two. Um, it's just safer. Go help, go help. Yeah. Cool, so you could tell Again, sorry about the yawning. The Lux is just a bit unsure of what to do. And this is probably a combination of not really knowing um, her champion identity. And just something that a lot of silver mid laners struggle with is understanding what to do in the mid to late game when the game gets like this. You know, the, the enemy team's quite ahead. Um, my team's very split up. What do I do? And really, you just go back to defending your base. Like, if you can defend this, if you can defend that. If your team's not grouping and there's no important objectives up, um, just go for CS and protecting your base. And now you can tell maybe Nocturne's a bit tilted. He's, like, split pushing. Um, this could be a good fight here. This could be a good fight. Yeah, this is a really good fight. Okay, Lux, you just need to survive. Excellent. Great job. She gets the shutdown. Really good. That's the importance of grouping. Trying to get this gold deficit back. You know, it's only 3k difference. 
Um, you can clearly see there's some leads appearing Nocturne. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the gold differences aren't really that prominent on any one champion. But hopefully they can claw this back. And, you know, obviously 3k gold at 28 minutes isn't really a big deal. So let's see what happens um, for the next, you know, 7-8 minutes of this game. Ideally, if you're red team, you kind of want to be slowing this game down and really um, try to capitalize on the enemy mistakes. So enemy mistakes, kind of like what that Mordekaiser did, is a perfect example where he's overextended, he's pushing a tier 2, and he has no support from his team. And so Lux just comes around, snares him, CCs him, and Nasus and her finish off the job to get a 600 gold shutdown. And now you can kind of see Nasus gets caught by the Teemo. So doing the exact kind of same thing he just killed the Mordekaiser with, he's like, oh, let me try that. And now he does the exact same thing that he just got a kill with. Um, and, you know, that's really what you don't want to do when you're behind. You just want to be playing safe, making sure your waves are pushed, and grouping when your team wants to group, and always making sure that, you know, you're there for the next objective, whatever it may be. Oh, my God. Okay, we eventually kill the Aswo. He did kill a lot of people. Dodge, dodge, you're just walking backwards. Um, this Lux, one big piece of advice I need to give to her, particularly against skill shot champs and high mobility champs like Yasuo, is try and dodge. Don't always walk back in a straight line. Mix up your dodging, whether you're going side to side, hovering right a bit more or left. Just always make sure you're trying to dodge rather than just walking back in a straight line because it's very predictable and it just makes the enemy's skill shots even easier to hit against you. Cool. So again, we're at a really awkward situation here because our mid lane's pushed. We just have to chill out. This is actually not a bad fight. Lux should just save us CC. Okay, that's fine. Dragon spawning in 50 seconds. It's going to be hard for red team to push this out and get to that dragon, but let's see if they can. Technically, they have a, uh, they don't have a numbers advantage because Maokai died. So, uh, in ho <laughs> you know, realistically, they can't really contest this dragon, but they should still go and just have a try and see what happens. So don't overcommit to get the dragon, but rather just go as a team together. Lux, you need to be here. Um, go together as a team, like, quite slowly, and just see if you can contest this dragon. Don't die for it, but see if you can contest it. Um, because obviously if you die for this dragon, blue team can just end the game. But if you can just try and contest it lightly, and see if you can get it, then that's really good. Particularly with Lux, with her ult, she always has a chance of stealing these dragons, and that's really the play you want to go for. Okay, so this is probably going to be the team fight that decides the game. Let's see what happens. Teemo's doing some really good war, um, shrooms, you can see. Um, not taking too much health off because she's not that fed, but still doing a decent amount of damage to the enemy. Cool. Again, Nocturne is doing his own thing, which is a little bit dangerous. I'm not sure what he's trying to do here. Um, oh, God, yeah. I like the idea of what the Nocturne was trying to do, but his team really couldn't help him. Ah, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, just a really big team fight gap. Yeah, and that's GG. Cool. Alright, so this game's going to play out, but really what happened there is a really bad level 1 invade set red team up for failure. Um, what was really good by the Nocturne, and it was a shame they couldn't capitalize on this more, was uh, Nocturne's focus on mid lane to get early game objectives. That was a really good play by the Nocturne, and well done by the Lux to help capitalize on that advantage that Nocturne was creating to make sure she could help get the Dragon and get the Rift. Yes, she could have been a bit cleaner with it and recalled a bit earlier so she didn't lose as much priority and wave um, CS in the mid lane, but she still did quite well. The real big downfall here for the red team was simply grouping at the wrong time, grouping with the wrong amount of numbers, and over committing on bad plays. Uh, you could see that when the Nocturne and the Lux both died, Mordekaiser got that double kill in the mid lane, you could see that at third Dragon when they had a numbers disadvantage, you could see that at the level 1 invade where they had a numbers disadvantage, and you could see that at that team fight where they were very split out and Nocturne was trying to um, do a flank which just was never going to work based on that whole team fight composition because the blue team was too close together so the flank would never work. 
Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Low Elo League of Legends. I think there's a lot to learn from this video as a mid laner and a Lux. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you join my Discord in the links below and we can chat there. As always, guys, cheers, good luck on the Rift, and I will see you on the next video.